another concept that we use in finite element a lot is uh, is we call uh, functionals. There are linear functionals and bilinear functionals. A functional that is can be confusing sometimes with functions, it's just uh, with the additional al. But a functional is a function defined on the space of functions. Okay, a function defined on the space of functions. Or if if x, so let's say if x is a function space, space, for example, the L2 space, okay, a functional, it goes, a functional maps x to r. So it, 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 you give me a function, I give you a real number. That is a functional. So that functional is a, a univariate functional. You give me one function, I give you a, uh, a, a real number. And a particular, uh, a linear functional means that, uh, so, so that means L, so let me let me say a linear a linear functional L uh, L F is is a real number uh, means if you if you scale this F by any uh, by any alpha. This has to equal to alpha times L of f. So the function is link. The function no is linear. It's not the function is linear. The function no is linear means if you scale the function by a factor of two, uh, the value of the functional gets also scaled by a factor of two. Okay. Also, if I have L of f plus g, it has to be equal to l of f plus l of g. So these, these are usually two of the criterions that consist of our general notion of linearity. So something be linear means if you scale something by a factor, the result scaled by the same factor. If, you, if the input is a summation of two things, the output is also the summation of the output of the two individuals. So principle of superposition is usually uh, what what makes things linear. So examples, if we are in the L2 space, the norm of a function is a functional, right? The norm of a function we defined on last slide, like like that, is a functional, right? Because if you give me a function, I give you a number. Now is this normal linear functional? No. Which which criterion does it not satisfy? Huh? Both. What? It actually satisfies the first one. Good point. If you take alpha to be minus one, it actually doesn't satisfy that. Very good. But if you take alpha to be something positive, it actually satisfies the first one. And the second one, it obviously doesn't satisfy because if you if you take uh, any, if you take f and g equal to minus f, okay, both of these norms are positive, but like uh, the the norm of the summation is norm of zero and is equal to zero. So very good. So the norm is not a functional. Uh, it's not a it's a functional, but not a linear functional, right? Give me an example of a linear functional. The integral, great. So the integral of a fun function is a linear functional because if you scale the function by a factor of two, the integral gets scaled by a factor of two. Okay, and also the summation of uh, the summation of the function has the integral equal to the summation of the integrals of two functions. Any other body? Ha any other people give me another example of a linear functional? How about the value of the function at a particular point? 
is that a functional? Yes, because for any function, give me a number, right? Is that a linear functional? Yes, right? You can verify this. Also, the derivative of a function at any particular point, right? The functional. It's a linear functional. So there is a lot of linear functionals over here. Okay. And now we not only have a, a linear functional, we also want to define what is a bilinear functional. A bilinear functional is actually a bivariate functional, and in a lot of fun uh, a lot of uh, finite element literature, they also call bilinear forms. I I don't see the norm uh, the the word norm used a lot elsewhere, so I I like calling it a bilinear functional. So let's call it alpha. Uh, Oh, I used the alpha here. Uh, let me call just the B. Uh, let me call just B. Bilinear functional operated on uh, it's F and G, so you have two functions. You, you give me a pair of functions, I give you a real number. Okay. So, so if you think of a linear functional being like a Um, okay, so so let, let me say it later. So a bilinear functional, uh, if b of f and g goes to r, and both f and g has to satisfy the linearity property. So so that means b of alpha f g has to equal to alpha times b of f g has to equal to b of f times uh, f and alpha g. Okay. So the alpha can go into either f or to g. It also tells you b of f1 plus f2 g has to equal to b of f1 g plus b of f2 g. All right. It also tells you the same thing has to happen for g. b of f uh, and the g1 plus g2 has to equal to b of f g1 plus b of f G2. Okay, so so if you satisfy basically linearity with respect to both your first argument and second argument, it qualifies as bilinear. So a close analogy is a, a bilinear function, right? A bilinear function, which is uh, uh, sometimes used to to form like to do finite element for like a quadrilateral element it's basically you have to be linear with respect to your first argument and your second argument the end result is it's not not a linear function but it's a uh, it's kind of uh, oh so we we have just defined the norm of a function there is also a notion of a norm of a functional and this norm of functional is no difference from the norm of a general linear operator you probably have studied in the in the context of uh, uh, in the context of uh, 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 linear algebra right so so if I have a if I have a linear operator X that takes a F goes to anything real the norm of L okay first I need to say what what function space it is so, so I, I have to say, for example, a uh, space of X goes to R, right? So F is in, is in the space X. As soon as I say F is in space X, I already have defined the the correct, I um, mean, the associated operators and uh, the associated norm in the space of X. Uh, something I didn't discuss is. Uh, so you you have defined a norm in the space X, and then the norm of L is defined as the maximum, or like if I write it uh, in the mathematic, well, let me just write it as maximum, maximum of L of S divided by the norm of F in the space X. So what this means is that you want to find, oh, okay, and this is R the F in the space X. 
and this is actually the maximum if the space is uh, uh, is complete. So so you you are looking at what is what is the possible choice of function that gives me the maximum like bend of the buck. So so if I I know like if I make so if my L of f is positive, for example, I know I can make L of f bigger if I scale f itself to be bigger, right? Because of the linearity. If I if I take f to be twice as large, I know my L of f is going to be twice as large. But the the key question here I'm answering, I'm trying to ask is, is there a way for you to keep the norm of f to be the same? That means not scaling f by a factor of 2. If you scale f by a factor of 2, then the norm gets scaled by a factor of 2, right? Is there a way to keep the norm of f to be the same, but make L of f bigger? What can you do to make L of, L of f bigger and bigger and bigger by choosing f of the same norm? For some linear functionals, the answer is infinity. For some, for example, let me give you an example of. Okay, so let me ask you for an example. If x is L two, and the domain is zero and one, okay, can you think of an example where you can construct a linear functional and uh, the norm of the linear functional is infinity, unbounded linear functional. Another way to think of it is, can I keep the same L of f, but make the norm of f smaller and smaller and smaller? How about the example here? So if I take the linear functional to be the value of a L2 function here, yes? Yeah, actually, any any linear functional that that is the value of the function at a particular point is such an example. So for example, here, I can define the linear functional as the value of the function here. And it turns out I can choose such functions that are narrower and narrower and narrower, right? The value of the linear functional is going to be equal to 1. But that means the numerator stays at 1. But the denominator, which is the norm of the function, norm of the function, becomes smaller and smaller and smaller as you make it sharper and sharper and sharper. So the value of a function at a particular point is an unbounded functional, we call unbounded functional uh, in L2 space. Okay, your suggestion is uh, how, what, I, what if I take x equal to h1? But like, I, what I want to say is that example is actually, I mean, I, I don't think you can, okay, so, so a function, if you define a function in, in L2, the function is always defined at any point. It's not continuous at, for example, a heavy side function is not continuous at x equal to 0. But at x equal to 0, the function has to be something, right? Okay, you can change the value of the function without changing the. Uh, okay, so if you if you have the notion that like the zero element has to be uniquely defined, so okay. Okay, I think I hear you. So. So if you if you if you stick to like the L two has to be a, has to be a Hilbert space and the, uh, the the element that has zero norm has to be unique, then I think you are you are right. Okay, so so I think you have a very good point uh, that L2 space is not a good example for the functional that takes the value of the function at a particular point. So uh, so if L of so if L of f is defined as f at a particular x naught, it's not a bounded functional in L2.